There are lots of stories in the news that are of great concern to me, and I'm sure they are to you as well. And uh, George Newmeyer is supposed to be jumping on with us. He's in the Ivory Coast, and as soon as he does, I'm going to go to him. Uh, a very fascinating article he put out at the American Spectator over the weekend about the decline of the Catholic Church in the Ivory Coast, which is should be very concerning since Africa, South America are the bright spots in the Catholic Church in the world today. So if they're not so shiny anymore, what does that mean for the rest of the church? George Newmar should join us any moment. Well, that may be true in other parts of Africa. It's certainly not true in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the Ivory Coast of, of Africa, which is a country, you know, it's on the Atlantic Ocean on the west, Western Africa side, it's facing south. It's um, it's to the south of Burkina Faso. It's to the, it's to the east of Liberia. Uh, Ghana is to the east of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. So it's a little, it's a country of I think maybe 23 million people. Abidjan is the administrative. And um, and business sort of capital of the of the country, and about five million people or so live. It's a sprawling city, but and uh, yeah, of course, it was under the control of the French from uh, like 1895 to 1960. And during that period, Catholicism flourished. Uh, in fact, Catholicism, I think, during that period was the dominant religion in Cote d'Ivoire. That's no longer the case. The dominant religion in Cote d'Ivoire today is Islam. Islam represents at least 40% of that of the population, and that of, of that 40%, a good percentage of those people practice Islam very devoutly, whereas the Catholics, which represent now only 17% of the population, only a very uh, small number of those folks practice Catholicism seriously. And I've seen here, you know, in my time here, I have seen that really the Catholicism that was spread by the French has really withered during the post-Vatican II period. And now um, Catholicism is actually trailing both Islam and Protestant Protestantism. There are more Protestants in Cote d'Ivoire today than there are Catholics. And um, and the uh, I would say the reason for this really is largely is probably the, the liberalism of Vatican II, which really killed off missionary activity. Uh, the French, you know, were very committed to missionary activity when they ran Cote d'Ivoire. And they were spreading the faith uh, through missionaries. But after Vatican II, uh, which, you know, Vatican II basically said that Catholicism was optional, not essential. And if Catholicism is optional, then you really don't need missionary activity. And so missionary activity declined considerably. And as a consequence of that, a lot of the pe folks in Cote d'Ivoire who had, had been Catholic, they either fell away from the faith or they converted to uh, evangelicalism. I've met a number of uh, evangelicals who are former Catholics, and they were turned off by by the unspiritual side of Catholicism, which which uh, manifested itself after Vatican II. The Church, the Catholic Church in Cote d'Ivoire, became less interested in spirituality and more interested in money and power and temporal politics, and that alienated a lot of people and drove a lot of people in Cote d'Ivoire into the arms of the evangelicals. And it may also have even uh, turned a few people over to Islam. Wow. And Islam, you know, one of the reasons why Islam is so strong and is a resurgence in uh, um, Cote d'Ivoire is that its roots are very, very deep. The, the roots of Islam go back to the 8th century. Islam was popular in West Africa during the 18th, 8th century. So, so Islam really is kind of the historical religion of this region. And when the, when the French left after 1960 and French missionaries left and and um, the church fell into the hands of a lot of post-Vatican II uh, politicized figures who really weren't interested in spreading the faith. The consequence of that was a lot of people fell away <laughs> from the faith, and a lot of people were simply not converted to the faith. And as I pointed out in my article, the irony here is that the two largest Catholic churches actually in Africa, on the continent of Africa, the two largest Catholic churches on the continent of Africa are both in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, uh, on the Ivory Coast here. One is in downtown Abinjad, which is St. Paul's Cathedral, which houses, which can hold about 5,000 people. And then the other one is in the political capital of Cote d'Ivoire, um, Yasamuka, and that is called uh, Notre Dame or the Basilica Notre Dame de Paz, Our Lady of Peace Basilica. And that um, church is modeled after St. Peter's Basilica, and it's even bigger than St. Peter's Basilica. It's a huge church. The interior of it can hold 18,000 people. Wow. The entire grounds of the church can hold 200,000 people. 
But when I went out there to look at it four days ago, five days ago, I got there and it was like, it was like a ghost town. There was nobody there. And it actually was the feast of the epiphany. Wow. And I thought, you know, it's the feast of the epiphany. Surely there's, there are going to be some Catholics inside the church praying at least. I got there. There was nobody there. So it's this massive church and it's absolutely empty. And so it raises the question, you know, how is it that Cotovar could have the two largest Catholic churches on the continent of Africa? And yet Catholicism in this country is just dying on the vine. George, uh, George uh, I think we're OK. Uh, so from a strategic point of view, the northern part of Africa is always kind of a, a leaning towards Islam. And you're saying the French came in and they were evangelizing. They built these wonderful churches. Once they left, uh, were there any, you know, uh, people from Africa who who went into the priesthood and are, are still able to give the sacraments to these people? Or are, are you saying that uh, because of the, the lack of uh, vocations there, that, that the, uh, the, the population that's Catholic is now turning to different religions? Well, the, you know, you, I do. I've gone around the country and I've seen these parishes, Catholic parishes, and they're all empty. They're all, they all look like ghost town. And mm -hmm. the priests, uh, to the extent that priests exist in Cotabar, they keep a very low profile. In fact, I went over to the rectory at the St. Paul's Cathedral looking for the cardinal. And I thought, you know, the cardinal, surely the cardinal, was, his name is Cutla, Cardinal Cutla. He must be living at the cathedral, you know, because he's responsible for this massive cathedral. And I said, where is Father, where's Cardinal Kawa? And the security guard said, he doesn't live here. Wow. He lives somewhere else. And that's, it's never a good sign when the person responsible for a parish or a church doesn't live at that church. So he doesn't live there. And then I went to the Grand Bassam Cathedral and I asked for the bishop responsible for that cathedral. And they told me he was on vacation. You know, this is during the holy season of Christmas and and he, they told me he's on vacation. And like, where where is this guy? He's the bishop of the area and he's on vacation. So I got a, I get the sense that um, the church in Cotovar is not very, is, is unwell. And that uh, it's a church that is not really interested in, in in Catholicism. It's really just interested in money, power. It said, apparently, I guess, you know, as, as this one Muslim put it to me, uh, the Catholic hierarchy is interested in money, power, and sex. It's not interested in religion. And I think that the reason why Islam is doing well and appeals to people here is that Islam, for all of its problems, does focus on God and religion and doesn't really focus on politics. The church, on the other hand, under Pope Francis, is completely focused on politics and is really not interested in spirituality and transcendent religious things. And as a consequence of that, the religiously inclined people in this country are not attracted to Catholicism. They are instead attracted to evangelicalism mm -hmm. and other Protestant groups, which are very fervent. I've been to, I went to an evangelical session or a service on Sunday and these people, and the service lasted for hours and hours and hours. And the people there truly believe in Jesus Christ. They truly believe that Jesus Christ is God from God, light from light, true God from true God. And you can tell that in the enthusiasm of their singing and the enthusiasm of their praying and the enthusiasm of the, the reading of the Bible. But when you go to the Catholic uh, mass, as I did at St. Paul's Cathedral, the, the, can, the quality of the mass is very lackluster and you can't tell if people, the, the minister or the priest actually believes what he's saying. I have absolute confidence that the evangelical minister I saw on Sunday, he believes in Jesus Christ. I have no doubt about that. In fact, this minister saw me at the service and I, I wasn't there, you know, as a Catholic, I was there as a journalist. And he, but he said to me, he said to me, uh, please come up and say something. And I said, well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> and he said, you can say whatever you want. And as it so happened, the evangelical <clears throat> service was being, held, was being held in the shadow of a towering mosque. And I said to the, you know, I decided that the remark I wanted to make was, I said, you know, your country is getting, becoming more and more Islamic. And I know that a lot of these folks are, are you know, they're solid citizens, you know, they're not, you know, as far as I can tell, radical Islam is really not that prominent in Cotabar. You do see some women in burqas and that's a little bit concerning, but for the most part, the Muslims tend to be 
you know, they wear colorful attire. The women wear colorful dresses. They're pretty well-mannered. The men wear kind of pajama-like attire. They don't seem very militaristic or frightening, a lot of them. We are out of time, George. Thank you for being on with us today, George. We are out of time, but we appreciate you checking in from Africa. We're going to be praying for a reversal of that horrible outlook. Go to spectator.org for more. This is Dale Alquist with a Chester.